So hi everyone and welcome to what I hope will be the last test, the last test flight of Kerbola Impulse. Today the goal is to uh, perform an high altitude test because I have decided to um, trust limit the engines. I felt that they were too powerful and so I decided to trust limit them to be uh, more realistic with the replica and therefore now I need to test the altitude performance uh, to see if it is uh, still acceptable of or if it dropped too low. So let's do that and while we will do that I will also talk about a few interesting points about, you know, uh, testing projects and the links with the scientific method. So let's take off. So the most important thing with this is not to stall when you take off. Picking up speed. Yeah. Trying to lift the tail. It does work, but let's be on the safe side and uh, really wait for uh, the, speak the speed to peak. Okay, let's try to take off. Gear up. So I can definitely feel uh, that there is less power but it doesn't seem to be that bad. So now the goal is to pick up altitude without lo losing too much speed. So we are rising very slowly, but speed is still okay. What I need to reach uh, with a decent capability, decent control is uh, I think around uh, 8000 meters, but I will be more satisfied if I reach 10,000 meters. And it will take a while, so I will probably have to edit this video a lot, but it's good that I have time because I wanted to speak about um, the parallels between testing, engineering, and uh, scientific method. So, um, at first it seems that uh, it is not uh, related, because, yeah, on one side you are trying to build up uh, knowledge, and on the other side you just try to see if the craft, or any kind of product you designed, works. But it is... Uh, really related actually and let me try to explain why when you try to be, to create a, a scientific theory and the scientific theory is basically the body of uh, knowledge you have about a particular field that is currently uh, that has the bet, best explanatory power it is the best thing you have so there were theory is not just a theory, it is a body of knowledge that we have constructed, that is self-consistent and it is tested. So, what do you do when you have to build a theory? Well, first of all, you start with observations. You observe uh, the... let me just correct the pitch of it. You start by observing the field, for example, you start to uh, observe how uh, a bird um, reproduces, what is its life cycle, and then you try to, uh, to see, to figure out rules, regularities about what you see, and you formulate laws, and you can even then formulate a theory about how uh, that type of bird lives, and, and uh, about their life cycle, their life cycle, so yeah. But uh, what you should then should do, 
uh, after you created the, the hypothesis is trying to test them. Does it really work, in theory? So how do you test things up? Well, you try to, as I said, uh, create predictions and then you see if the predictions turn, turn out true. For example, uh, if the cuckoo bird um, himself removes the eggs from the host species nest, if you suppose that, it is something that you should be able to observe. You can put a camera or hide or watch what happens and some, someone did that, sorry I forgot the name, I should uh, um, do a bit more research on that, but a scientist observed it and it turned out it was not the parent who did that, not the mother, it was the small cuckoo bird that is actually uh, expelling <laughs> the hatchlings of the other species. So when you see that your theory was wrong, you can correct it, or if it is right, if your prediction work out in the field by doing the experiment, then you can confirm them and it becomes a more uh, solid theory. And now I have to pitch down because otherwise I will stall. And by going back and forth between experiments and uh, theory building, you can make it better and better and better. And that's why uh, scientific theory is uh, never completely true, 100%. There is also uh, details that are not figured out. There is also always a margin of uncertainty that you have to try to remove as best as you can by using the scientific method. So basically it's the idea and it is uh, what for now what works best to create science. Sometimes you have exceptions because your experiment doesn't work and you have first to figure out how to do the experiment. You think you can observe one uh, phenomenon but it doesn't work, it's a, a, para it's a parasite signal or something like this but Essentially, it is what you do. Then there is also the question of uh, fields of knowledge, because sometimes by observing something and doing experiments, you notice, oh, there is another field we have not explored yet. And then you have to start again building a new theory for that new field that, is well, that was completely unknown. So, I think I have reviewed the most important aspects. But now you will ask me what is the link with uh, testing and engineering, because after all, uh, it, is not a, it is a completely different goal. Well, it is, but the process of trying to create a theory and then trying to see if it really works is finally similar to what you do in engineering. You come up with an idea. I'm not completely, I'm not a trained engineer, I am a trained physicist, but what I have to do is come up with a design and then make sure it works. And the important part is that you have to test it in a safe, in safe conditions so that we are, where we are in real conditions it works as intended. First you have to test it in safe conditions. You cannot just, oh yeah, let's try it and when you are in uh, dangerous conditions, flying an aircraft in the ocean, you have not properly tested it and you crash and you die. Or uh, at least you lose your aircraft because of a uh, not proper test of uh, every crucial capability of the aircraft and something is not uh, right. You realize it too late. So there is this fact of testing, of really confronting the idea with the real deal, that's the most important part. Bottom line is that you have not only to test the ideas, but to uh, to be really precise, to know, okay, what is my goal, what do I really want to achieve, what are the details, and what uh, uh, can really then happen in a test that takes into account several uh, dangers. Uh, you just have to test that the idea works and then to, have to, to test it under stress, the idea. 
So we have, that you have, we have an ambition that uh, you have lowered the risk to, the, to a minimum. But of course you cannot lower the risk to zero. That's, that's simply impossible. So let me just try to gain a bit more altitude, but I, I don't think I, have, uh, I can go under 30 meters per second. Because when you try, when you are starting to, um, sorry, when you are starting to stall, then usually uh, things go really bad really quickly in this aircraft. So because you don't have reserve power, so I have to be careful. But now that I am at 500 meters, I think I could perhaps recover. The thing is that do I really want to lose altitude? No, I won't. I don't want to lose all that time. So, so basically, um, what I wanted to say, bottom line, is that um, the idea of uh, testing stuff really well is also really useful in um, engineering. And by the way, it, it is not only true in engineering. Um, now, there are a lot of project management principles, for example, that borrow from the idea of the main ideas of science, of the scientific method. When we, you will try to design a project, try to implement it, see how it works, and uh, modify it so it works even better, there is this idea of testing that is present. And it can even work in everyday life. If you have a device that doesn't work, well, you can try to uh, figure out, okay, uh, can, uh, try to figure out which uh, culprit is the more likely. You say, okay, this is my candidate, and if this part is really broken, if this really is a problem, what will then happen? You make a prediction, and you test if it is what you observe really or not. For example, if uh, you think that the antenna for your radio is uh, broken, you can try to change the antenna. Because you, see, you think, okay, uh, if the antenna doesn't work, and if I change the antenna, I should fix it. So that's a very simple uh, deduction, but that's exactly what you are, that's exactly the scientific method. And then you try, does it work? And if uh, it works, first of all, you know what was wrong, because you tested your hypothesis, but you also have fixed your. Um, your appliance, so you have killed two birds with one stone. But uh, if we are interested in the method and knowledge, well, you can see that you test an hypothesis by changing the antenna. What I am really realizing now is that, um, yes, the order of magnitude of the performance in terms of speed and the climb rate is decent, but in fact, I think I am under the capabilities of the actual aircraft. And this is, uh, in a game, I think this is a bit uh, sad, because you, first of all, if there is a bug, you want to have uh, an excess of power. You don't want to be at the very edge of not being able to climb. Uh, you want to have more power than this. And also, this is a game, so why not making the things as convenient as I can for myself, instead of being uh, on the low end of the performance. If it is realistic, I don't mind it being slightly over the specs of the real thing. I don't want it to be overpowered, but if it is slightly better and still realistic, I don't mind. So I think I will... Uh, Throttle back the throttle back. No, not really. I will uh, remove the first limit at 80%. I might even try it that right now. So it's it fast, so we don't turn too much up. And here we are at 100%. And now we should be able to climb in more a convenient fashion. Already you can see it speaking with speed and climbing. And I think it's, it is still slow enough, it shows uh, the, the idea. 
which shows, it gives an idea of how the real uh, solar impulse performs. So now I think if I am on a configuration that I have already tested, so I know I will be able to climb at at least 8,000 meters. So this should be okay. But le, just to be on the safe side, I will um, I will confirm that I can reach this altitude again. Okay, there is now another test I would like to perform, and it is actually to take off. Okay, this is a bad idea. I should uh, first activate the engine. It, activating the engine is probably good, you know, if you want to take off. So let's go symmetrically. But yeah, I want to try to take off from a field, basically. Activated all the engines and uh, power, full power, and let's see if we can take off. I will give a little bit of upward stream. Let's uh, deactivate the brakes and let it just take speed. Push the other wing down a bit to reduce friction. I I'm not sure it helps, but let's try. And now it's probably time to pull off. Ah, yeah. Don't pull too much, too fast. And I don't know why I'm taking off so aggressively. Let's again speed again, retract the main gear and only retractable gear. This also shows you how they had to really cut the weight down. They decided, it, uh, uh, more or less the same as the real aircraft, they decided to put only one main landing gear. And we are going up question is, are we going up fast enough? Are we climbing fast enough? I hope so. Radar, yeah. We are climbing, but let's try to be as efficient as possible. Full power, as I said. Don't stall it either. So yeah, it looks decent. Uh, the, these hills are not that high, actually. I'm going fast now. I should really try to climb a little more. I can, so I should, because again, there are hills in front. Climb, climb, climb. Or perhaps, you know, it's time for a really, really brutal landing. So, let's decrease the power and go. Go, 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 abroad, that kind of... beginning of a flight and land. Really, really hard turn, accelerating, not to... to avoid stalling. So, not to stall. Yeah, let's uh, land uphill. Why not? Why not? This is Kerbal Space Program, right? So, yeah! Okay, yeah, pretty crazy. Well, not actually, no. We are 10 meters per second sinking speed, so... We are 10 meters per sec second, so no, it's not that bad. And we see... 
uh, where the ground is, thanks to the light, so yeah. Okay, let's flare it now. Flare, flare, flare. Pull up. And cut power. We don't need power anymore. Are we on the ground? Yep. Oh, now we are. We don't even need to brake because uh, we land uphill, so yeah. And we are set! Okay, so now I don't want this video to get too long, so I will show the last test in the next one. And what you can expect is uh, water landing testing. Also, I will, I will add a few words about how the scientific method can help you in the everyday life. So, please stay tuned and uh, see you next time, guys!